Hey, how's going on everyone? Welcome to the new video of our algorithms design and analysis series. In our last video, we have studied what are asymptotic notations. Today, we will study some properties of such asymptotic notations. Our first property is reflexivity. If we have a function f of n, then f of n is the big O of f of n. For example, if we have a function f of n given by n square, then n square will be the big O of n square. This property is applicable for big O, big omega and theta notations. Our next property is transitivity. If a function f of n is big O of g of n and g of n is the big O of h of n, then it implies that our f of n is the big O of h of n. By the definition of big O notation, we have f of n should be less than or equal to c1 g of n and g of n should be less than or equal to c2 h of n or some values of n greater than or equal to n naught. From this we can say that f of n is less than or equal to c1 c2 h of n. As c1 and c2 are constants we can also write it as fn is less than or equal to c h of n where c is c1 times c2. Therefore, it is proved that f of n is also the big O of h of n. Symmetry. A function f of n is the theta of g of n if and only if g of n is the theta of f of n. By the definition of theta notation, we have a function f of n such that f of n is greater than or equal to c1 g of n and is less than or equal to c2 g of n. For all values of n greater than or equal to n naught, we can also write this as g of n is less than or equal to 1 by c1 f of n. And from this, we can write g of n is greater than or equal to 1 by c2 f of n. Combining both of these inequalities, we can write g of n is less than or equal to 1 by c1 f of n and is greater than or equal to 1 by c2 f of n. Therefore, it is proved that g of n is the theta of f of n. Our next property is transpose symmetry. A function f of n is the big O of g of n if and only if g of n is the big omega of f of n. Also, a function f of n is the small o of g of n if and only if g of n is the small omega of f of n. Let us prove this property. According to the definition of big O notation, we have a function f of n such that f of n is less than or equal to c g of n for all values of n greater than or equal to n naught. We can also write it as 1 by c f of n less than or equal to g of n. As 1 by c is also a constant, this is a representation of big omega notation. Therefore, g of n is the big omega of f of n. Hence, our property is proved. Because these properties hold for asymptotic notations, we can draw an analogy between the asymptotic comparison of two functions f and g and the comparison of two real numbers a and b. So f of n is the big omega of g of n is like a is less than or equal to b. The, the big omega notation is like a is greater than or equal to b. Theta notation can be represented as a equals to b. f of n is the small o of g of n is like a is less than b and the small omega notation is like a is greater than b. We say that f of n is asymptotically smaller or equal to g of n if f of n is the big O of g of n and f of n is asymptotically larger or equal to g of n if f of n is the big omega of g of n. 
One property of real numbers, however, does not carry over to asymptotic notations. That is trioctomy. For any two real numbers, A and B, exactly one of the following must hold A less than B, A equals to B or A greater than B. Although any two real numbers can be compared, not all functions are asymptotically comparable. That is for two functions f of n and g of n, it may be the case neither the big O nor the big omega notation holds. Our next property states that a function f of n is the big O of g of n. Then it implies that log f of n is the big O of log g of n, where log g of n is greater than or equal to 1 and f of n is greater than or equal to 1 for sufficiently large n. Now remember large n is a key term here because this property holds true for only large values of n. Now let us prove this property. By the definition of big O notation we have a function f of n which is less than or equal to c g of n for some values of n greater than or equal to n naught. As f of n is greater than or equal to 1 and log of g of n is also greater than or equal to 1 therefore we can take log on both sides of our inequality without risking the change in directionality of our inequality. So log f of n is less than or equal to log of c g of n. By using the property of logarithmic functions we can write log f of n is less than or equal to log c plus log g of n. As log g of n is greater than or equal to 1 for sufficiently large values of n, therefore g of n cannot be monotonically decreasing function. Hence, log g of n would be greater than or equal to log of c. From this we can write log f of n is less than or equal to 2 log g of n. By writing 2 as constant c, we have log f of n less than or equal to c log g of n. Considering log f of n as function 1 and log g of n as function 2, this inequality satisfies the condition of our big O notation. Therefore, log f of n is the big O of log g of n. Hence, the property is proved. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions or doubts, please share with us in the comment section.